to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ and you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We welcome you today to our study of Godly Homes in an Ungodly World. Today we're thinking about the wonderful role of the father, godly father, godly husband, and godly man in the home. And what an important role that is. The world often tries to look at the role differently than God, but we need men today who will step up and be real leaders in the home and think about everybody's spiritual interest. And so we're so glad that you joined us for our study together today. We want to encourage you to find your Bible and have it ready as we're going to look to the Word of God on this powerful subject. Friend, we want you to know that today's lessons are being brought to you by members and congregations of the Church of Christ. Won't you visit the Lord's Church in your area? Stop by their assembly on Sunday or Wednesday. You'll find people there who love God, who are friendly, uh, an environment where you will be welcomed into. You'll be an honored guest. And we just want to encourage you to visit the Church of Christ in your area. If you've got a question about biblical matters, you'd like to study the Bible further, there'll be people there who'd be happy to sit down and discuss God's Word with you. And friend, here at the Gospel of Christ, our aim and our emphasis is to point men and women toward the Word of God. We'd love to help you in your study of the Bible as well. Won't you visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com? From there, you'll find a wide variety of good Bible study material. If you'd like to have a copy of this eight lesson series on godly homes in an ungodly world, we'd love to make that available to you. Go to our website, The Gospel of Christ. Visit our media request form. From there, you can fill out that form and we'll be happy to give you either a free digital download. Instantaneously, you can receive that. Or if you'd like to have it on DVD, or CD listen to in your car, you can uh, request that as well. We'll send that to you free of charge. And won't you also check out the Android and Apple Store for our apps for your smartphone. They're a great way to study the Word of God in such a fast-paced world today. Friend, as we think about godly homes in an ungodly world, Today's lesson, the responsibility of the godly father and husband and man is such a pivotal lesson for the home to be what God wants it to be. We need men to step up today and be the kind of fathers and husbands and leaders in the home that God wants them to be. And so we're going to be thinking about what is the role of the godly husband and the godly father in the home. And let's begin by noting this. The Bible teaches that the role of the husband in the home is that he is the head of the home. I want you to look in your Bible in Ephesians chapter 5 with me as we note that the husband's role is to be the head of the home. Ephesians 5, look in verse number 23. The Bible says, For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and He's the Savior of the body. 1 Corinthians 11.3 says, God is the head of Christ, Christ is the head of man, man's the head of woman. There is a natural hierarchy of who's been input in the place of leadership. 1 Timothy 3.5, uh, 1 Peter 3.7, wives are being obedient to their own husbands, over and over again. We hear that the husband is the head of the home. He's been placed by God as the spiritual leader in the home. His role, not just his role, but his God-given responsibility and privilege is to lead that home in the direction it ought to go. Now, friend, hear me well today. When we say the husband's the head of the home, are we saying he's some type of Nazi dictator and whenever he says something, he can bark out orders and everybody's got to get in line? That's not the idea. 
What does it mean to be the head of the home? Friend, I want you to think about it in the way the Bible addresses it. Ephesians 5, verse 23, Ephesians 5, 25, Ephesians 5, verse 28 and 29. He is to be a head of the home just as Christ is head of the church and He's the Savior of the body. What is the example for the head of the home? Well, friend, it's Christ. Christ is the head of the church. Now, may I ask you this? Has Christ ever forced you to do anything? Has Christ ever berated you into doing anything? Has Christ ever demeaned or made you feel less important to get you to do anything? Well, of course not. How is Christ the head of the church? Well, friend, by His example by His sacrifice, by His commitment, by His dedication, and by the life that He lived. I want to follow Christ willingly because of who He is and what He did. Friend, that's the kind of example husbands and fathers need as leaders in the home. How can we be good heads and leaders of the home today when we think about everybody else's interest? When we've got the spiritual welfare of the family in mind. When we're trying to every day to, to, to help people get to heaven and to do the things that will promote godliness and, and provide for people. When we've got others' interest, not our own selfish interest in mind, you know, it's easy to get behind somebody and follow them. And so the husband, what a powerful role he plays in being the head of the home and how, listen carefully, we need men we need fathers, we need men who will step up to that role, not shirk that responsibility. That's your role, husbands. That's your responsibility as fathers. Don't put that off on somebody else. Don't shirk that responsibility. When you do that, the home's not going to be what God needs it to be. But friend, as we think about the role of the husband and the father in the home, not only is he to be the leader in the home, He's to love his wife. Listen to Ephesians 5, verse number 25 again. Husbands, love your wife as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Listen to verse 28 and 29. So husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. Uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 3 through 5, he's to, to, to love his wife and put her first. He's to love her as is fitting in the Lord. Friend, when we think about, you know, here's the idea sometimes, the, world, the way the world looks at men. Men are tough. And men are strong, and, and men never cry, and they never show their emotions. Friend, that idea is false. That's not according to the Bible. What kind of leader, what kind of father and husband do we need in the home? One who's loving, who loves his wife in a selfless, sacrificial way. What does it mean to love your wife and love your family? Well, again, we learn from the example of Christ. He loved his wife. He loved the church as his own body. He gave himself for her. He put the church's interests first. Here's what I want you to do. When you associate Ephesians 5.25, husbands, love your wives. Ephesians 5.28 and 29, love your wives as Christ loved the church. I want you to associate that with Acts 20.28. 20, the Bible says, Paul speaking to the elders in Ephesus said, shepherd the church of God, listen now, which he purchased with his own blood. How did Christ love the church? He suffered. He was beaten. He was tortured. He went through agony all so that he could purchase the church. Husbands who love their wives are going to be selfless. They're going to think about the, the family's interest. They're going to put themselves out there and they're going to do everything possible to make it where everybody in the family can be enabled to live a good, healthy, spiritual life. And so we need godly heads. We need husbands who will love their wives. But then we need this. The husband is also, to be a godly leader, to be a godly man, he's to understand his wife. I want you to open your Bible with me to 1 Peter chapter 3. Look in 1 Peter chapter 3. And I want you to notice what the Bible says. Verse number 7, 
Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. The husband, not only is he a head leader, not only is he loving, he's understanding. You know, everybody's built a little differently, and everybody's made differently, and men are made differently than women. That, that's the design God made us. But you know what I've got to do? I've got to work on, husbands have got to work on being understanding. Dwell with them with understanding. What's that mean? I don't always see things from my wife's perspective. I don't, she can look at a scenario differently than I'll look at it. She has different uh, securities and interests and, and things than I do and things that I might think are nothing. I, I may, she may see that totally different. And so what's my responsibility as a, a godly father and a godly husband? I need to put myself in their shoes, see it from their perspective, to understand and, and help myself to understand the way that they look at and see things and the, the needs that they have may be different than I see it. But my responsibility is to dwell with them with understanding, to place myself in their shoes and to see it from their perspective and to offer aid and help and be a leader in that sense that it's not just about my understanding and the way I see it. What about others in the home and the family as well? And then think about this with me. What is a godly husband and a godly leader really like? For in the Bible teaches, he is to honor his wife. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible again says, Husbands, dwell with them in understanding, giving, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel. My responsibility is to honor the wife. James 4 teaches this idea. 1 Peter 1, verse 7, she is worthy of honor. Think about the place of the wife in the home. She deserves respect and honor. You know, we, we talked about it in our lesson with uh, husbands and wives and the role of the wife as well. The husband is to honor her, but she's also to honor him, meaning that they're to honor and respect each other. Respect is the key idea. You know, we all want to be respected. We want to be treated fairly. We want to be treated kindly. We want to be treated with honor for the things that we do. We don't want to be talked down to or looked at negatively or, or, or looked down on as lesser. We're all worthy of that respect. And so let's give, as husbands, let's give the wife the respect she is deserving of. Think about all she does for the family. Think about what she goes through, her hard effort, uh, how much she's doing to help and to enable everybody, and let's be respectful. Let's say thank you. Let's give her the place of honor that she deserves. What else is the husband to do? The husband is to be the provider for the family. I want you to take your Bible, and I want you to look with me in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. As we think about this idea, in 1 Timothy 5, verses 8 and 9, the Bible teaches that the husband does have the responsibility to provide for the family. Look in verse number 8. Paul says, But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, now we know who he's talking to, he, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Is part of the husband and father's responsibility to provide for his family? It absolutely is. Uh, he is to be a, a nurturing father who takes care of his children. He's to make sure everybody is provided for. A and yes, he is to be a hard worker. He is to go out and provide for his family. But friend, I want you to hear me well. Being a good provider for the family does not necessarily mean that you go out and work and you flop a paycheck down on the table and you say, here, I've done my job. That, that's not all we're talking about. What does it mean to be a good provider? He not only provides for the family physically, but he provides for the family spiritually. He provides an environment where people can grow spiritually. 
He provides an environment where people are encouraged to develop into the image of Christ, where they're developed to have the mind of Christ, where we're encouraged to read our Bible, where we're not looked down on, but we're encouraged to pray, where, where we're encouraged to develop the fruit of the Spirit and grow into what God wants us to be. He provides an environment where, as a provider, people can develop emotionally and spiritually, and, and the family can be what it got, wants it to be. And so when we think of a provider, we're not just talking about, hey, he did a good job, he went out and worked, and he made a lot of money for that family, he put a roof over their head, he was a good provider. Friend, hear me well. There are a lot of people who went out and worked hard, made a good living, put a roof over people's head, but failed as a provider because they didn't provide an environment where people could grow spiritually, pointing people to heaven, were nurtured and developed into the image of Christ. And so don't just think, I'm a good provider if I go out and work. Are you providing the opportunities Everybody in the home needs and deserves. And then what else is a good husband and father? He's also seen in the Bible as a protector. I want you to turn your Bible back to Ephesians chapter 5, and I want you to look with me in verse number 25. The husband, the godly husband, and the godly father is a protector of his family. Listen to Ephesians 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church, listen to this, and gave Himself for her. Husbands have the responsibility to protect their family. We want to protect them from physical harm. We want to uh, protect them from the problems of this world. Uh, I'll give you the example of Jesus. John 15, 13, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He lays at the door of the gate. He's not letting anybody in that shouldn't be there. Fathers and husbands have that same responsibility. We want to protect our family from harm. We want to make sure everybody is in a safe environment. But you know, we also, and probably more so, want to emphasize the spiritual protection we ought to provide our family. We want to protect our family from wickedness, from evil, from sin and Satan. Don't let into your home. As a father, as a protector, as one who lays down his life for the family, protect it spiritually as well. Don't let things in the home that are going to cause people to lose their soul. What we hear, what we watch, the people who come into our home, the environment that's there, we want to provide a safe environment spiritually where people can also grow and develop into what God wants them to be. Now, Here's the key to it all. Good fathers, good husbands, their responsibility is to train their family, to train their children to grow as God wants them. A good leader is a good trainer. Open your Bible, if you would, to Ephesians chapter 6, and I want you to see what Paul says about the role of the husband and the father to be a spiritual trainer in the home. Listen to these words. Ephesians chapter 6. I want you to look at what the Bible says in verse number 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, that you may live long on the earth. Verse 4. And you fathers, listen to this, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. What's the responsibility of a father? He's to train his children and no doubt encourage the wife to grow spiritually. Um, train them. The King James says, bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. He's to provide an environment where people can learn and grow spiritually, and it is his responsibility, not the church's, not somebody else's. It's His responsibility to bring them up, to know God, to grow spiritually, and to teach them the ways of God. J.B. Phillips, who has a paraphrase of the New Testament, and I understand it's just a paraphrase, he put it in a really unique way. He translated his paraphrase this way, Fathers, do not overcorrect your children or make it difficult for them to obey the commandment, bring them up. 
with Christian teaching and Christian admonition. What are we talking about? Here's the idea. When it says, do not provoke your children to wrath, fathers, be especially careful of this. Don't always be negative. Always critical. Always saying things are going to run them down. Don't say things like, you're never going to amount to anything. You can never do right. What are you ever going to be when you grow up? No, we don't want to say that. We want to encourage. We want to, we want to give positively. We want to lift them up. Um, we, we mentioned in our other series this idea on the home as well. But I want you to take from the example of Jesus the way to do this. Christ and the church, they're the bride, and Christ is the husband, He's the head, and there's a powerful lesson that can be learned here. To addressing the seven churches in Asia Minor, five of those churches, only two of them were doing what was right. Five of them had big, big problems. And yet, in every example that Jesus could, in addressing those five churches, Jesus always, always, always tried to accentuate the positive first. I know your works. I know your faith. You're doing these good things. You're holding to this. You've got these people who are doing right. And then Jesus would say, but you've got this to work on. And he would say, at the end of that, even when he said some hard things, he'd say, and if you do this, here's the positive benefit. Your name's going to be written in the book of life. Uh, he who does not deny me can overcome and live with me. What we're trying to get at. Fathers, be very careful not to be overly critical, not to be so negative all the time, not to be harping on the things they do wrong, but rather encourage and train them and lift them up in the right way. And so as fathers, we have the awesome responsibility to train our children. Now, let's think about this. We talk about the idea of being a spiritual leader to train our children, but, and we say, fathers, you need to step up and be spiritual leaders. Okay, that's all good and well. But what is a good spiritual leader? What am I going to do if I'm a good spiritual leader in the home? Friend, I want to share these ideas with you about what it means to be a good spiritual leader. What's a good spiritual leader? A good spiritual leader means you're going to be a leader in your example. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Husband can lead his wife to the Lord. A wife can lead her husband to the Lord by their example. 1 Peter 3, 7, uh, 1 Corinthians 7, 14 and 15. We're to walk in the light as he is in the light. We're to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. 1 Peter 2, 22, we're to have the mind of Christ. If I'm going to be a good spiritual leader, I need to be a leader by my example. People, people can look to that in the home and they can see that's the kind of example we want to live. I want to be a leader in prayer. Husbands are to be leaders in prayer. I desire, therefore, that men pray everywhere. Uh, we realize the power of prayer. James 5, 16, it overcomes much. We pray without ceasing. People can see our example in prayer. And so I'm a leader in my example. I'm a leader in prayer. I want to be a leader in Bible study. Deuteronomy 6, verses 1 through 4, we want to set the Word of God everywhere before our family. Set it as front as on your eyes. Set it in the house. Set it on the doorpost. Study to show ourselves approved unto God. Uh, search the Scriptures daily. If I'm going to be a good leader, I'm not only a good leader in prayer, I'm a good leader in Bible study as well. I want to be a good leader in my example of service. Uh, Hebrews 10.25, in attending the service, we're not to forsake the assembly when there's work to be done in the church to be a real leader. Husbands, you don't need to be telling others what to do. All, uh, you know, that's not the idea. You need to be out there working. Get your hands dirty and people can see what you're doing and you can be an encouragement to them as well. But I also want to be a leader in that I'm a spiritual protector for my family. I, I don't want anything to come into my home or family that's going to cause problems. Ephesians 5.11, the Bible clearly teaches, let no uh, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, rather we're to expose them. Morally speaking, I want to, as a leader, I want to protect my family from things that are morally wrong, whether that be things that can come in on the internet, things that can come in in television, people that can come into my house that are not living morally, uh, the type of friends that we hang around, that our children hang around. I want to keep that environment. We're not going to shelter ourselves from the world, but I sure don't want to let that in my home and family and to be an intimate part of our life. 
We want to stand up for what's right doctrinally. How can we be good leaders in the home? Let's take a stand, fathers, for what's right doctrinally. And friend, we really want to emphasize this as we bring our lesson full circle today. I hope men and fathers, young men, I hope you'll listen real carefully to me. We need people in the home today who will step up, seize this opportunity, and really be the kind of leaders we need them to be. I want you to think about Joshua. Joshua had been watching Moses' example. He was Moses' assistant. He'd been watching Moses' example. Moses, by his example and through his word, had been training him. And Moses wasn't going to be around forever, right? And when it came time for Moses to go on to the other side, Joshua was ready to take that mantle of leadership, and he did a great job leading God's people into the promised land. Why? He got up there. He took that responsibility. He still needed to learn. He still needed to grow. But he did his best. We need men, young men, fathers, husbands in the home who will be good godly leaders. And so our hope today is that this lesson will motivate and encourage us as fathers to love our wives, to love our children, to be good leaders, to provide an environment where people can grow spiritually and in every way to do what God wants us to do, to be the kind of husbands and fathers we ought to be. Friend, again, we're so glad that you've joined us for our series on godly homes in an ungodly world. These are trying times that we're living in. The home, in many ways, is indeed under attack, but God's Word has the answer. Our encouragement is, let's put the Word of God out before us. Let's really live as an example. Let's do the types of things God wants us to do. And our prayer is that our homes, our homes will be a beacon of safety and love and truth and that everybody in the home will be what God wants us to be. Again, we thank you for joining us, and we want to encourage you. Join us next time as we're going to think more about godly homes in an ungodly world. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the